Greetings everybody. Several months ago, a longtime supporter and viewer had written me on Facebook. This is a viewer who identified as a vegan and who had some health problems. She had written me and asked my viewpoint or if I could do a read on why so many vegans are becoming so sick. And there it have even been deaths. Why now? What is behind all of this? I didn't have an answer right away. I was really busy at that time, but I told her that I will investigate it and um, report whatever I come up with. I have done some research. I have meditated on it. I pulled out my calibration chart, done an intuitive reading on it, and I want to share with you guys what I've concluded. Now, before I get into the meat of this, let me first say that I wanted to pinpoint the timeline when veganism became the most popular or the most trendy and it was around 2010 I think it started definitely in 2009 but it peaked by the end of 2010 so it would make sense that those who jumped on the bandwagon around that time are for the most part in the pool of those who are really dealing with some serious cause and effects as it relates to a strictly plant-based diet. The next thing I did was do a calibration reading on vegetarianism, pescatarianism, veganism, breatharianism, and I rated them in the most successful for a large population pool to the least successful in terms of a lifetime of being on this diet what is the percentage rate out of the overall population that could live successfully on this particular kind of diet so vegetarianism is number one it calibrated at 751 out of a minus 499 to the highest being 1000 so that is very good that is telling me that a huge portion of the population could survive off of a vegetarian diet throughout a lifetime without any problems that's about 75% of the population could live and be a vegetarian and have high vibes, live very successful, healthy lives on this diet. Now, a lot of vegetarians consume animal byproducts and would eat seafood. So I think that's another reason why vegetarianism rated so high on this list. Pescatarianism rated at 549 that's pretty good that's about a 52 percent margin of the general population could survive a lifetime without having any health problems vegan is 340 it rated a little above average and the lifetime survival rate is at 10 percent now right away this is a red flag this right away tells me why there are so many people who are not doing well on this diet breatharian that got a one lifetime survival rate literally there's 0.1 percent of the population if they were to focus on becoming a breatharian only 0.1 percent could survive such a diet now I'm going to get more into this at the end of my 10 reasons as to why veganism is not working for a lot of people and why so many people are becoming very ill and there have even been deaths and there will be unfortunately more. Number one, improper preparation, improper transition, trendiness. What this means is that a lot of people jumped on the vegan bandwagon without doing their due diligence, without going to check to see if this is something that they can medically do for themselves. They didn't wane themselves off of the diet that they had beforehand and transition properly into this one. Because keep in mind that when you do anything for a lifetime as it relates to the body, the body will get used to that particular way of being. So to do something abruptly, especially as it relates to a diet, 
can cause shock and trauma to the body. Then the, the trend in this part is what I warned about time and time again. Whatever is popular and pushed out on the forefront and made to look cool and made to look like something everybody need to be doing, we always have to look at that with three eyes, okay? The two in our skull and the one that cannot be measured by human sight. So there were a lot of people getting onto this thing because it was trendy and popular, especially at the peak of the so-called new age movement. Number two, super sensitive to stress, high anxiety, endocrine system, most compromised. Now, what this means is that when we become lighter in any kind of way, be it whether we are uh, fasting for long period or if we are on a diet such as a vegan diet we are more sensitive to the elements it, it just comes along with the territory because we don't have the buffer or filter of the fat around the body not as much fat to filter the energies that are coming at us so being on a vegan diet naturally yes we are lighter we're leaner we're also more sensitive and the vegan diet does not really do anything to help us to handle the level of sensitivity this naturally causes stress to our senses causes high anxiety and naturally this affects our endocrine system and this inevitably leads to disease health problems Number three is in the same category of what I've just mentioned, weakened ability to fight off toxins and parasites. Again, when your endocrine system is compromised, naturally it affects other parts of the body, so your immune system inevitably becomes compromised as well. So if the immune system becomes compromised, it opens us up to more parasites having its way with our bodies, more toxins overpowering the body. Number four, ingredients and in meals lacks in essential vitamins, mineral, lack of supplementation. Now, a lot of plant-based diets do not have its proper nutrition. You have people spraying chemtrails over our heads. This stuff is getting in the soil. The soil is not pure and cultivated as it was many years ago. This is why I say no matter what kind of diet we're on, we're all being hit with toxins and poisons. So if we are compromised in other ways and we are not getting the proper vitamin and minerals, then many are not taking supplements or what have you or drinking mineral water this again inevitably adds or leads to illness and sickness. Number five, lacking essential protein that can only be found in animal meat. Now I know that there are a lot of uh, vegan powders and supplements and drinks on the market that is supposedly having this particular protein, but I'm not getting that this is working obviously. Number six, some vegan products are GMO. This fact is not being made known to the consumer. What this is essentially saying is that there are a lot of vegan products on the market and they will say it's all natural, it's plant-based, but what they're not going to tell you is that that plant that they made the product out of is lacking in genuineness genetically modified plants to keep bugs and things of that nature away so naturally when we consume the byproduct of these things it's going to eventually lead to some problems so just because it says that it's all natural and it's all plant-based that doesn't mean that it's not or has not been genetically modified the plant itself or the grain Number seven, lack of exercise, physical activity. Now, I happen to know some vegans who feel like, well, you know, I'm already lean um, and basically I don't have to exercise because I'm at a nice weight. If I exercise, I will lose too much uh, weight or too much uh, muscle mass, whatever the case may be. 
And this is a trick because there are some people who got on a vegan diet just to, you know, stay slim, to lose weight for vanity reasons. We still need to have some form of exercise or incorporate some kind of normal exercise into our lifestyle in order to maintain a healthy and balanced body. So yeah, there's some people who are vegans who feel like they don't have to exercise because the vegan diet is keeping them fit and then, but that's only in terms of visual. Just because someone is lean does not necessarily mean they're healthy. And just because someone got some meat on them does not necessarily mean they're unhealthy. Now, I could have made this a separate category because it's the opposite. I'm going to just keep it all under the same umbrella. There are those who do exercise regularly, particularly those who are athletes, dancers, people who job requires them to be constantly moving where they have to be in really really good shape if you are vegan and you're constantly on the go and you have a very vigorous active lifestyle a plant-based diet can also lead to joint problems the bone people are losing their teeth Okay, so the more energy we exert the more protein and energy we should be putting in Number eight, degeneration of muscle and bone tissue, which equals various diseases. Some people may not want to hear this, but it's the truth. There are just some things that the body needs for a lot of us that you just cannot get from plants. And you cannot get from grains. There are certain proteins that is in the meat that some people absolutely need. So if you have a degeneration of muscle and bone tissue, that's opening us up to all kinds of problems. So a vegan diet is just not going to give us certain proteins that we absolutely need for a strong, healthy, fit, and balanced body. Last and definitely not least, I am getting that a lot of vegan products have soy in them and this would again lend itself to like people who have vegan restaurants there's soy being added to the food over the counter products soy is in the food so when you add all of the top nine points that I made including this one you got the perfect storm for what we see unfolding now 10 years later 9 or 10 years later with so many vegans now when we talk about a balanced diet I'm not talking about a one-size-fit-all kind of thing and here's where I'm going to give some suggestions some advice from my own experience because I had become a strict vegetarian I did it overnight that was between 2005 and 6. Somewhere around that time, I decided that I just wanted to get meat out of my diet altogether. And I became a strict vegetarian. I felt the lightest I've ever felt. I didn't get colds. I was having the most spontaneous, beautiful, balanced astral projection experience at that time as well. Now, here's where I was messing up. What I was doing, working a full-time job, a very stressful full-time job, I was going to the gym, but I was skipping meals. I wasn't taking any vitamin supplements or anything. So what happened was I would regularly go get physicals. And the end of the first year, I went and got a physical and come to find out I had a severe vitamin deficiency. So what I did was I had to go back to eating poultry, Every now and then when my body would tell me I need a protein boost, I would go and get the beef, but I would go and get the beef from a place where I know the animal is treated with respect, the animal is grass fed, and that when the animal is sacrificed, it is as quickly and as painlessly as possible. Of course, you pay more money for that kind of meat, but that's what I did. And pretty much that's what I have been doing ever since. So I found my balance in conjunction to fasting and periodically cleaning my system, detoxing, getting colonics. So this is my balance. I'm not going to tell you or anyone else to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. 
that works for me. That's what's keeping my body healthy, balanced, and strong. So I'm sharing this with you guys so that you can start reassessing your situation and find a combination plan that works for you. Now, let me tell you why a combination plan would work best for most of us. When we look at our genetic makeup, most of us have different tribal lineage, meaning we have a multitude of different ancestral ways of living, ways of eating. That is encoded in our genetics. So if we had ancestors who ate strictly fruit, and then you have a certain group who did eat meat, and then you had another group who was more on the plant-based diet, that would mean genetically, and it would make perfect sense for a strong and healthy body, that we would formulate a diet in ratio to our genetic makeup. There's a very good book called um, Eat According to Your Blood Type. There's a science to this. It's all about us getting in tune with our individual space, getting in tune with our bodies. Talk to your body. Your body is an intelligence all of its own. It does things without any influence from you at all. More of us need to start hugging our bodies, thanking our bodies for the work that it does and getting in tune with it to the point where if there is something starting to go off path, your body will tell you what you need. Listen to the body, not what your emotions are telling you or what you've been hypnotized or taught or told to do. All right, that's all I have to say about that. For those of you who do not know, I do have an alternate channel that I'm starting to build out. I already have three videos there and I will be posting another one there this week. Very, very interesting channel. So if you have not come over and checked out the videos that I had there, come on over. And if you like, by all means, subscribe while you're there.